Hey folks, Randy Newberg here. Thanks for watching this episode from season nine of Fresh Tracks. Did you know that our Fresh Tracks Plus platform now has a free option? Yeah, if you go over there, you can watch this episode and a few others ad free. And those of you who are paid subscribers, you already know, you can get a lot of exclusive content there. You get early access to content. You get invited to our exclusive live streams. And some of you even win an hour of FaceTime with me where we can plan your hunt. Go check out freshtracks.tv at the link below. When Marcus told me that we were coming up to Alaska, I was super excited. I've always wanted to experience all the weather, see all the landscapes, just all the natural beauty that Alaska has to offer. Kara, my wife, has a caribou tag, and I have a moose tag. We got a vehicle rented. Alaska's amazing. I hit the road this morning, and we got another hour and a half-ish to, to where my unit starts, but... It's sweet, I'm pumped. The amount of public land, BLM, state, is insane. There's so much public land up here to explore. So I drew a special permit that allows me to hunt moose within the five mile corridor of this highway. The whole reason that this road exists is because of the Trans-Alaskan Pipeline. It covers the entire state and I have this like mixed feelings about the pipeline because it is this big scar on the landscape, but we use, we use oil all the time, and also we're using this roadway that services the pipeline for our hunt. And we stopped to glass where we thought there might be some caribou. No, there's just wildlife everywhere, it's super cool. So Kara sees doll sheep, and then Michael spots a grizzly bear while looking for the doll sheep. And then Kara's looking around and finds two caribou over here. This is looking good. This is a good animal spot. We're looking right into the sun, so we're gonna go get close and try to get ahead of them and make an assessment, see if there's a bull, or bull in there. Kara can shoot. Go chase him. So growing up in Montana, I didn't really have a Montanan experience. I definitely grew up in the city. I played sports, sat on the couch, watched TV, hung out with friends. Honestly, when I first met Marcus, I didn't eat meat. I wasn't really impressed with the options that I had available to me from the commercial marketplace. And really it was Marcus's introduction to the natural landscape is really what got me back into eating meat and going and finding that challenge myself and trying to harvest it myself and bringing home an animal every fall and putting it into our freezer. It's been a good first day because I feel like it's gonna be a rare occasion where you can just stay out of sight the entire approach. There were so many caribou and it was a blast. They'll run around, they don't really pay much attention to you until you get to about 100 yards and then they'll, and then they'll spook and run away, but we heard a resident describe them as squirrels running around out on the tundra. They spooked before we were able to get on there, but it was a really fun first experience. <laughs> That's fun. It was cool. It was the first time that I'd ever uh, seen barren ground caribou. The only caribou I've seen before was uh, mountain caribou on Randy's British Columbia hunt. Should we go get a boo? Okay. Get a boo? Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. We spooked him over there, came up like, I don't know, a half mile, mile. Thought we'd be ahead of them and then they're definitely ahead of us already. Since I'd never seen caribou before, I really don't know how to hunt them. And with elk, Marcus and I, we always get up high, we glass for elk, and then we go after stuff. With the caribou, again, we're able to see them and try and make plays on them. Uh, and once you get out there, they might kind of move along, but then stop and look back at you. Um, but they could also just go on forever without stopping. What do you think we should try and sneak up on these guys? 
try and get to those bushes and then those bushes maybe. Having the number of caribou that we were in, it gave us a really great opportunity to be able to test all these different strategies to see what might work. And then there's two couple patches over here of caribou, so we'll go check those guys out. There's like three of them. They're just like standing there. They don't care. All of a sudden, they're coming in, uh, and then they start bedding. I don't know, it's really cool. They're super close. <laughs> they're like 150 yards away. They're bedded though, so they're not gonna get any closer. And there's also not a bull, so. So we can't shoot any of those. But at the same time, caribou come in from another direction and another direction. We begin getting surrounded with, by caribou. We're just, there's literally caribou everywhere around us. So this other group that comes in, we know that there's a bull in there. So we're like, man, maybe this is gonna work out. So let's maybe slip out, get a chance at that bull. We start slipping out, immediately realize that we had made a misjudgment and one of those cows was actually a bull. That tactic didn't work. I think the, the original one that we went after is a bull, and then this new one is a bull. And that's all that I'm comfortable with saying is a bull right now. We try and go after the other bull that we know is there. And so at that point, we pretend like we're caribou and... Let's be, let's be a caribou. Michael's like, maybe we just throw our arms up and they'll just think we're a caribou. They appear to be going with a new tactic. I think they are trying to be the caribou. Act natural. Uh, I don't know, maybe it could have worked and they do, they do kind of look at you and it's easy to get within a hundred yards of the caribou and that's kind of their comfort zone. And as soon as you slip into anything closer than that, then that's kind of when they really wanted to walk off. So was there never in any, in archery range? No. I was like, the U.S. had three different, like three different herds all converging like on you from every direction. That was yeah. so wild. That was yeah. cool. Yeah, it was really cool. What are those things? They're like cruising. They're real problem, sure. They're just, they have like freaking ants. They just show up out of nowhere. There's a whole bunch of them. Right oh, there. wow. Yeah. We tried to see if we could cut them off, but uh, just a little too far. <laughs> There's a bunch of them. There's a lot. There were quite a few bulls too. That hundred yard mark, really, with the rifle, <laughs> it would have been pretty fun to be able to actually actively seek an animal out and then go after it. But with a bow, it was pretty dang challenging. On to the next one. <laughs> sit here, the other ones come out from somewhere else. <laughs> so you have to look around you constantly. Another no-go. <laughs> it's pretty sweet to see him on that big flat expanse and um, watch Kara Stockham it was a blast. So how, what's the verdict? How does uh, running at him work? I'm honestly willing to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you.
it looked like you got kind of close. I got pretty close. They just got so confused. They're like, yeah. huh? We like that. And then like, yeah, uh, nah. We think the next technique is run at them, hit the deck at 100. It's, and then I get and then, up. And then they get curious. Yeah. Dude, it's called the peekaboo. <laughs> we just like, you're going and then you're like, boom. <laughs> and then they're like, what? And then they're like, where'd you go? And you're like, right here. <laughs> and they're like, whack. Wow, look at that. And so we saw uh, a herd that had a couple big bulls in it. We decided, man, this is gonna be our last, our last ditch effort on a caribou. Let's make it a good one. Let's actually do this right. Chill in here for a while, see what they start doing and react accordingly. There is just one road in here and everybody's hunting from the same road. It's everybody's last chance of whether it's the end of their hunt or the end of the season. Everybody just wants to be successful and so they're gonna do what they're gonna do. We unfortunately had to play in with some other people going after the same animals and so we were able to try and utilize them as an additional pressure to see where the animals might go. We tried to make a whole big arc around them and kind of figure out where they might actually end up. Two other hunters hunting these same caribou and they we keep trying to get ahead of them, but no dice, so we're just gonna head back to the truck, go find some other herd that doesn't have a bunch of people on them. I just want some caribou in my tummy. I I'm know. actually really hungry. But we need some camp meat, damn it. It's time to kill something. <laughs> Ptarmigan. If we were out here trying to survival. <laughs> <laughs> the berries don't taste good here. <laughs> hey folks, Randy Newberg here. Hope you're enjoying this episode from season nine of Fresh Tracks. It's been out on our Fresh Tracks Plus platform since we launched last September, and now we're launching season 10 over there. No matter where you watch us, whether it's on YouTube or whether you're one of our paid subscribers, we thank you. And if you want to check out Fresh Tracks Plus, I hope you go to the link below. It'll take you to freshtracks.tv. Whether you sign up for the free version over there or you sign up for the paid version, either way, we really appreciate it. And on the way out, I did get to see a couple term again. Oh, sh um, missed. Yeah. So that was pretty unfortunate. I was really hoping to taste some ptarmigan while we were up here. Can you turn it on yourself too? Yeah. Just out here in the Antarctic. You do have to hit record now. I'm starting to get super excited. We're going, going moose hunting and got a special permit. We're in Alaska. Being a non-resident, I have to shoot a bull that's either 50 inches wide or has four brow tines. And so I'm like, that's all right, it's a special permit. There's gonna be big bulls running around everywhere. We'll find one. Uh... Kara's gonna go watch the other side of the river. And then she's, she's gonna wait a while and, and call as well. There's moose tracks that go in to the brush right here. I don't know if it's a trail they use frequently or maybe just 
just like a couple times. Mm. We saw a little bit of old moose poop, nothing fresh. Uh, we glassed, we saw nothing. Yet, though. I thought they're supposed to be everywhere here. Special permit, they're supposed to be behind like, every tree. It, my excitement was waning a little. If there, if there was one walking around covering ground, we would, I'm pretty sure we'd see it out here or over there call for a little bit but just the fact that I haven't seen anything working across any of these big open areas I'm just kind of thinking of just kind of rinse and repeat go and hike up big knobs glass call if we don't see anything don't hear anything nothing comes into our calls just go to the next high knob hike out we saw one moose track and a grizzly track and some wolf tracks just not a lot Whoa. it is amazing up here it's so fun but I do start to get nervous when I'm not seeing animals I'm not gonna lie I get nervous moose hunting here it's it's really hunting the unknown just going out there hoping that something comes in. We would hike up to high points and we'd hike along the river bottom. We'd call along the river bottom. We haven't seen a ton of sign anywhere. A few tracks, old poop, that's about it. We tried to gain elevation and glass as much as we possibly could. We continued to do that for days. That being said, best part about this hunt is being with Kara and Michael. Into the moose hunting, Kara just had, like, finds a silver lining in everything. She finds blueberries and is super stoked on the blueberries. Or look at these mushrooms, look at this poop. She found like 8,000 different kinds of poop on this trip. The rain's really gonna come in here shortly. <laughs> I'm gonna lie, that's super discouraging. So the weather while we've been here is extremely variable. It'll be raining, it'll be snowing, all of a sudden the sun will come out, and then uh, pouring rain again. We are wet. All our gear is wet. But you just keep pushing through it and know that you can do it. I feel like we kind of came to the realization that we weren't gonna even see a moose. But it was okay because it was such a blast. Like we were just having a good time in a cool place. We had a wood stove in our tent, so we'd hang out in the tent and uh, stay warm, drink coffee, and, and uh, have good dinners. We're looking for moose. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why we haven't seen any. <laughs> let's just let's just drive the road. It's like we might as well use it to our advantage. We're gonna go look for moose. I honestly I I don't know what the best option is we keep getting on all these high points and glassing and 
that hasn't turned anything up. I think tonight it's kind of raining. We're gonna drive around to go to any glassing spots, stop, scan everything we can see, drive to the next spot, scan everything we can see. It's not what I'd like to do, but I'm just kind of out of ideas at this point. We, we've driven the road quite a bit, but usually during the middle of the day, we weren't driving it at like, you know, your classic morning, evening, best times to, to spot game. As we're driving the road, spot a moose, it's a bull, like, I don't know, three, 400 yards off the road. I'm like shaking immediately. I was like, holy crap, we see a moose. <laughs> this is amazing. He's not even close to legal though. <laughs> That's the bummer, being non-resident in this unit. It's gotta be 50 inches or four brow tines. This bull's probably 40 to 45 inches and three brow tines. We decide we should just probably keep, keep on driving, go see if we can find some other stuff. On our way out, there's a guy parked right where we saw the moose. And I'm like, oh, yeah, somebody went after it. So we pull over and it's a guy that we actually met before. He comes rolling up and he's just like, I just shot him. I think it was a good hit. He ended up putting a tape to it. I think it was between 42 and 44 inches. So definitely not even close to legal for non-residents, but it's pretty cool to see on the ground. There are big animals, even compared to a Shira's moose that we have in, in the lower 48. This thing just dwarfs it. I don't think so. Hey. <laughs> oh, that's like, honestly, not bad. It's doable. Yeah, you know, that's like. Oh. <laughs> we all had to see what a, a moose front shoulder felt like on our back. It's crunch time. Hopefully we see something, but definitely winding down. This has been the most incredible experience. Just being in this country, wolves, we saw grizzly bears, we saw caribou, we saw porcupine, some owls that I don't know what they were, the vegetation, the terrain, walking around in the tussocks, the mountains. It's fun being here and being with Kara and Michael. And not being able to go home for 10 days and being out of service and experiencing everything that's here. It's just been so much fun. Even if you can just come up and see the sights, it's totally worth it because Alaska, this place is awesome.